Welcome to Lamins.com and our lab video series on MPLS. You can find a complete list of MPLS video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this video, we're going to be configuring MPLS Multicast VPN. We're first going to start configuring the global multicast routing for the MPLS network, and we're specifically going to be using source-specific multicast for that. They will look at the two most important elements of MPLS multicast VPNs, and they are default MDT or data MDT, and MDT stands for multicast distribution tree, and you will see how they are used differently, and why would you want to use the data MDT in addition to the default MDT. And then we're going to be enabling per VRF multicast routing, and we're going to try both the dense and sparse mode for that. For our physical lab topology, we have eight routers, R1 through R8, and one switch, switch one with R2, 3, 4, and 5 connected across point-to-point -point serial links, while the other routers and switch are connected across layer 2, as shown in this diagram. Okay, for our layer 3 topology, we have a pretty much a standard MPLS VPN setup with the our core MPLS network within this orange circle, and R1, R2, and R4 being the PE routers, and R3, R5 being the PE routers. And we already have the IBGP session going for our MPBGP between our PE routers. And for our customer sites, we have three sites. They are being represented by our router R6, R7, and Switch1. And they are running BGP for the PECE routing protocol. And all these devices have their loopback 10 through 12 advertised and then communicated across the MPLS VPN. So our goal in this lab is to provide multicast reachability among these three sites. So MPLS Multicast VPN is one of those concepts that's a little convoluted and it's always a good idea to have a complete understanding before we get into the actual configuration otherwise you could be easily overwhelmed by the concept and the amount of configuration that's required. So what I'm going to do first is to kind of walk you through at the high level overview of what's really going to happen as part of the MPLS VPN to support the Multicast. So let me bring up something that I can kind of draw on and let's go ahead and step through that. So the first thing that you will need to do is to enable your MPLS core to support Multicast and that's basically your underlying infrastructure. So taking our lab scenario as an example, that means you have to enable all the links that we're seeing that connects all the PE and P routers together with PIMS and that is just the basic Multicast routing to be enabled. And then next, you need to create or define a multicast under the customer VRF, and this including defining your default MDT multicast address, as well as address pool for the data MDT. And basically what the default MDT is, is the first multicast distribution tree that's being joined by all of the PE routers, and that's how they communicate whether it's a control or data traffic primarily. So it's kind of an overlay on top of the global multicast routing that's only being participated by the PE routers that have the multicast routing enabled under the VRF. Okay, the data MDT on the other hand is something that will be constructed later once the data traffic is start flowing through across the network and that's to provide an optimal path for routing high throughput uh, data traffics which we'll explain in a second how that will be constructed uh, later but first thing first is for the all the PE routers to join a default MDT and that can usually happen in two ways. One is using the share tree as part of the sparse mode and that will have to be bi-directional share tree so you just go through the whole rendezvous point definitions just how you build a multicast network with the sparse mode but it has to be bi-directional since any of these PE routers can potentially be both the sourced and listeners of the traffic. A second approach you can also use for this which is a more recommended or commonly used approach is to use the source specific multicast which is what we're going to be doing in this lab. But for the source-specific multicast to work, the listener needs to know the IPs of the source from a out-of-band method. And then once that the IP is known, the listener can send a join request directly to the source. It doesn't even have to go through a share tree. And for this particular scenario with the MPLS VPN multicast, the default MDT IPs and the source PE IPs mapping will be communicated as part of the MPBGP. And you see later that for that to be supported for the new iOS version, you need to enable the address family IPv4 MDT. And once the PE routers kind of discover each other, they will directly build a source based tree and they will act as both as being a source and a listener. Okay, so just imagine that you have kind of an overlay with a default MDT. 
that each of these PE routers will join. And then what, once that's been constructed, you next have to enable multicast locally on each of these sites, whether it's being a dense mode, sparse mode, or even source specific multicast. And then a source of the a multicast group can pretty much start transmitting to any other sites over the default MDT. Once the data traffic kind of exceeds the threshold that you configure for the data MDT, the source P will allocate a new multicast address from a data MDT pool and then start advertising that to all of the neighbors. And that advertisement is going to contain the mapping between the of the source PE routers and the multicast group. And that way, any other PE routers that has a local listener can send a source specific multicast join to the source PE and basically construct a direct source based tree for that data traffic of the particular multicast group. Okay, for the PE router that does not have the local listener, it's just basically going to cache that mapping in case in the future it re received the join request from the local device. Okay, so let's say in this case R6 is a source and it starts sending traffic. Initially, it will go across the default MDT, but once the threshold is exceeded, let's say the switch one is the only listener for those traffic, then it will basically build a data MDT directly just to the router one while the router two will completely stay away from that data MDT because it does not have local listener. And that way the data traffic doesn't get multicast to all of the PE unnecessarily. Okay, so that would be over the data MDT. Okay, so that's pretty much what's happening behind the scene. So now what we can do is to go ahead with our configuration tasks. So our last scenario here is to configure all of our PE routers to provide multicast connectivity between multiple MPLS VPN sites. Okay, the task number one is to deal with global multicast routing. And first we need to configure multicast routing on router uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 using the sparse mode. And then we need to configure all of our PE routers to support source specific multicast, but only for the following non-default MDT groups. And we want our default MDT to uh, multicast group to be within those IP ranges 239000 slash 24. And for our data MDT, we want it to be within the 239.255 slash 16. Let's work our way from left to right, starting with our first PE router, router R1. So to enable multicast routing, you do IP multicast routing. Then we need to configure a PIM sparse mode on our MPLS interface which is fast and zero zero as well as the loopback because this is our source interface for our BGP sessions and that's a requirement if you're using the source specific multicast. Okay, since that's it's going to become the source of the traffic as the mapping is sent out to all of the PE devices. So for our loopback zero, let's do IP PIM sparse and then fast zero zero IP PIM sparse. Then we have to come up with an access list to define our SSM multicast group. So we're just going to call this MDT. And our first range of multicast address is 239000, and that is slash 24. And for our second multicast group range for the data MDT is 239255000 slash 16. And then we tie that to a command IP PIM SSM. As you can see with the question mark, you have two options here. First is the default. So if you were to use the default SSM multicast group, which is 232 slash 8 for your MDTs, then you don't really have to go through these exercises, just creating access lists. But since we are using the non default SSM multicast range, we need to kind of override the default using our range command and then tie the access list to that. So MDT. Okay, let me um, try to copy that into a notepad since we're going to have to configure the same thing on multiple devices. Paste, and I believe I also need the command for SSM. Just going to put that together. Okay, and then also need the IP. Multicast routing. Let's kind of, uh, kind of build a quick template here. So that should be it for R1. Next, 
Moving on to the router R3, R3 needs three interfaces to be enabled. And actually, I'm just going to go ahead and enable the loopback as well for the multicast. So go ahead and copy this. And for loopback zero, IP pin sparse mode. And then we also have three additional uh, interfaces, fast zero, 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 and then zero one zero although it needs a pim enable copy and then paste it looks like i misspelled the sparse let's try that again there you go so that will be our r3 next is our router r4 same thing required three interfaces enable plus the loopback, so it would be serial zero, zero, zero. This one is one, zero. The other one is two, colon, zero. Actually, in R3, we didn't really need to um, define the MDT because it's not a PE router that will participate in SSM. So let me actually remove that, okay? But for our R4, our R4 is going to participate in the default MDT. So we need to have that enabled. And then for R5, R5 is not PE router, so all we need is the multicast routing enable on all the interfaces. Here's R5, paste, and then on R2, R2 is our PE routers. So we need it, the MDT range command. But let me modify the interface real quick. Okay, and then just copy and on R2, paste. Okay, so so far we just enable basic multicast routing with PIM sparse mode. Let's do a quick show IP PIM neighbor. You can see R2 is being a neighbor for R4 and R5. Let's check R3 just to make sure. Same thing, do you show IP PIM neighbor? And we should be seeing R1, 4, and 5 being R3 neighbors. Okay, and that should complete our task number one.